So these next bunch of stories are supposedly true ghost stories about encounters that people had. It, you can believe them if you want, or they could just be stories like the title says. But anyways, let's get to the stories and see what you think. I stayed at the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast in April of 2016. After our grand tour of the place, all of the guests were encouraged to explore the house and take pictures and whatnot. Well, my friend and I decided to hang out in the parlor where Lizzie Borden's father was axed to death and ask our tour guide more questions. As we were hanging out on the floor in a circle, the door to the dining room started violently shaking. One of the other guests whispers, I wonder if Mr. Borden is pissed we're lounging around at his death site. And the door immediately stopped shaking. Now, I don't really know if I believe in ghosts, but I do know that I definitely took a pill that night to knock me out. I worked at the Wallow Lake Lodge in the early 90s. I was a front desk clerk for graveyard shift, so Work consisted of me mostly just doing lots and lots of laundry. So I was walking out of the kitchen and I saw a little girl in a powdered blue dress at the edge of the dining room. I said, hi sweetie, do you need something? She ran upstairs to the rooms. I don't know why, but I took off after her. The guest doors were all loud, but I got upstairs. There was no girl, no door closing noises, Every door on the floor was closed. I work in a haunted hotel, and I have plenty of co-workers who share stories of stuff they've seen, but I've personally only had one incident. I was working late, just past midnight, when I had to go to the bathroom. This bathroom I'm using is in, it's in a public area, and it's fairly large. Standard men's bathroom in that it has both stand up and sit down stalls. So I go in and I'm the only one present. It's quiet and I walk up to the stand up stall and start to go. As I'm going, I hear a knocking sound, very fast paced, like someone rapping with their knuckles, coming from behind me and over my shoulder. I look in and I see the door for the handicap sit down stall is vibrating which is making the knocking sound. It's moving like if someone had locked it from the inside and was bouncing it off the lock and the outer doorstop. I'm still going to the bathroom, mind you, and I get overcome with chills, but I finish up and it's still making that noise. I think that it could possibly be a coworker playing a prank, so I laugh and say, very funny, and it immediately stops. So I walk over to expecting the door to be locked with a co-worker inside. So I knock and the door swings wide open with no one inside. I get overcome with chills again and just ran out. There was no way the door could have made that noise without being locked. Anyways, I still use that particular bathroom, but never late at night. Freaked me out good and proper. I worked briefly at a hotel that everyone claimed was haunted. It was surprising because it was a brand new building, but nobody wanted to work alone in there at night because of all sorts of weird happenings that went on, such as paperwork going missing, rooms being locked by deadbolt from the inside with no guest in there, and people complaining of loud footsteps above them for hours. And when we went to check, the room above was unoccupied. I stayed in one haunted hotel with my friends and woke up in the middle of the night to hearing something running up and down the hallway. I looked and of course nothing was there, so I went back to sleep. I woke up not long after that and heard the tub in the bathroom running, but nobody was in there. When my son was about six months old, I had a dream that I was at my grandparents' house with him. 
My grandfather was holding my son and crying while I talked to my grandmother. I told her that I wished her and my grandfather were still alive to see my son and she said, don't worry, we see him. I didn't think anything else of it until about five years later. I was talking to my sister and I mentioned that I had a dream about our grandparents. She said, was Papa Joe holding your son while he rocked in his chair? And did Grandma tell you that they were watching you? I said yes and asked how she knew and she said, I had the same dream when my son was about six months old. And more recently, my son, he was 20 at the time, was driving home from work late one night. And as he drove, he said he very clearly heard my mother, who had been dead for two years, say, Jonathan, stop the car. Out of reflex, he did. And as soon as he stopped, three deer ran out in front of him. Had he not stopped the car, he'd have hit them. When I was a student, the campus was located on what had been only 20 years before an old asylum for the insane. Like, you know, batshit crazy people. They did lobotomies there and whatnot. Most of the buildings had been refurbished into normal school buildings with lecture halls, study group rooms, etc. It seemed pretty normal except for the small study group rooms that had only one window that was one square feet, 15 feet up on the wall, with bars in front of it. Yeah, now walking around the halls at night was creepy enough in itself, but one experience I'll never forget. I was the leader of a student professor team that was in charge of evaluating lectures, professors, timetables, etc. And we usually had our meetings after hours. This one time we sat in what used to be the old employee cafeteria. Now I had seen the original blueprints from back when it was an asylum, so I knew what buildings had been the woman's cell wing, the men's wing, administration, including the morgue. A little while into the meeting, suddenly all of us, eight people in total, turn around at the same time, everybody hearing what seemed like a woman's scream coming from an open window towards the old woman's wing. We all knew we were the only ones at the campus at the time, and we had all heard it, as evidenced by the fact that everyone's head turned around. Not me, but a friend who was a pilot she stayed at an older hotel downtown Chicago and was studying for her recurrent class, which was in a few weeks. While at the desk, deep in thought, she heard people talking and laughing. When she looked up, it got quiet. She said it sounded like it was in the room with her and she went back to studying. The noise started off softly and then again sounded like a party was going on in her room. She got up and looked around, and there was silence. There were no sounds coming from any rooms, no television on, no radios, no people in the hallway. The noise was definitely in her room. That night around 2 a.m., she was in bed and felt someone brush strands of hair from her forehead and tuck it behind her ear. She jumped up and turned on the light, and there was no one there. She didn't get back to sleep and she bit around that overnight so that she wouldn't be in that hotel again. A friend's grandfather either worked in or owned a hotel at some point. The building was hundreds of years old, dated back to the English Civil War. The story goes that he was cleaning up in the dining room and he saw three men in armor charging at him with weapons. Being ghosts, they just ran through him, but apparently he was left feeling physically ill, afterward having come into contact with the apparition. My friend's grandfather called in a medium to come check the place out, and she freaked out at the nature of the supposed presence in the hotel. If I remember correctly, they found through later research 
that there had been some murders committed by three soldiers in the building during the Civil War. If you like what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you'd like to, you can follow me at Twitter. The handle is at Fuzzy Pantaloons, and I'll see you all next time.